For as long as we have gazed at the sky, people have regarded eclipses of the sun as mysterious and even terrifying events. When the sky went dark in the daytime, many ancient cultures feared that a monster might be devouring the sun. Some attempted to rescue the sun by making noise, banging on drums, throwing weapons skyward, or even by performing sacrifices. Today, we know why eclipses occur and that sacrifices aren't necessary. As the moon circles our planet, it passes between Earth and the Sun about once a month. But it usually misses a perfect alignment because the moon's orbit around Earth is slightly tilted with respect to the plane of Earth's orbit around the Sun. Now, most of the time, the new moon passes either above or below the Sun as seen from Earth. But roughly every six months, a perfect alignment is possible. The moon can cast its shadow directly onto Earth's surface. Observers in the path of the shadow will see the silhouette of the new moon blocking all or part of the sun's disk from view. How can the tiny moon do this when the sun is actually 400 times its diameter? Well, the sun happens to be 400 times farther away than the moon, so to observers on Earth, they appear the same size in the sky. During a total solar eclipse, the entire sun is obscured allowing us to see its pale outer atmosphere, or corona. When the moon is a little farther away, appearing slightly smaller, it might not completely block the sun's disk, leaving a thin ring of light visible around the moon's silhouette. This bright annulus of light washes the sun's corona from view. Observers not located on the path of the moon's shadow will see only a partial eclipse, in which the moon's silhouette doesn't completely block the sun. In some cases, the center of the moon's shadow misses Earth entirely, and no one gets to see totality or the annulus, although a partial eclipse can still be observed. As with all solar observing, you must take proper precautions to protect your eyesight. Looking at the bright sun without any protection will cause permanent eye damage, and a safe solar filter cannot be made from common household materials. Proper filters are specifically designed for observing the sun. The best options include mylarized or thin polymer eclipse viewing glasses, but make sure that they're in good condition with no scratches or pinholes. One safe way to observe the eclipse is to project its image through either a telescope or a pair of binoculars focused to produce a sharp image. Remember, do not let anyone look through the device at the sun while you're doing this. You can also use a small, flat mirror to reflect a low-resolution image of the sun onto a shaded surface, such as the side of a building. The farther away the building is, the larger the sun's image will be. Pinhole projectors work well for deep, partial eclipses. Poke a round pinhole through a piece of stiff paper or cardstock and let the sun's light shine through it onto a shaded surface, and you'll see a tiny image of the sun. If you're projecting about three feet, the image of the sun will be about a half inch in diameter. And again, the greater the projection distance, the larger the image. Another safe way to observe the eclipse is to watch it through a properly supervised solar telescope, or if the sky is overcast, live on the internet. Here are some details for this current eclipse. Enjoy the wonderful sight of this alignment of Earth, the sun, and the moon.